Welcome to another episode of History on the Hill. My name is Monique Sugimoto and I'm the archivist and local history librarian with the Palos Verdes Library District. Um, you may notice that this episode of History on the Hill is not in the library in our local history center. That's because the library is closed for maintenance. So we are shooting this episode at the RPV TV studios on the City Hall site here at Rancho Palos Verdes. Today we have a very special guest and that is council member Ken Dida. Thanks again, Ken, for coming. It is so great to have you um, here in the RPV TV studios um, to talk about the collection that you donated um, to the local history center. Um, and for everybody uh, to know, uh, Ken and I worked together, gosh, when was that, Ken? Oh, at least five years, six I think years it's ago. At least five or six years ago. It was before the reincorporation of the Historical Society. I remember that. But I went over to Ken's house a couple of, I think I made three or four trips. <laughs> at least. It, I think it was at least three or four trips. Because Ken was, has been storing um, a whole slew of boxes. I think there were 20, at least 20 boxes of materials that documented the Save Our Coastline um, effort and also the Fourth City effort. So today what I brought is some stuff and I thought we could talk about some of the, um, some of the materials and some of the things that I think are interesting and that you can actually help me um, with so I can process the collection a little bit more. How does that sound? Sounds great. Looking forward to it. <laughs> You're almost through finishing that collection. I'm anxious to see what it is. Yes. Um, you know, actually, you have asked me before, like, why is it taking um, so long to do it? Um, part of it is just archival processing, being a, a loan arranger. That's what we're called in the business when you work by yourself. That's part of it. But another large part of it was that I think I, at that time, five years ago, I didn't really have an understanding of the collection and of the relationship, say, for instance, between Save Our Coastline and RPV, you know, the incorporation of the city. Uh -huh. Because that is, that was a very complicated story. And as we're not going to get into that complication, but I don't think I was prepared to be able to put it together until now, until going through it. And now that I've learned much more. And I wasn't going to tell you because you probably not do it. <laughs> You mean you didn't you about tell me how you would want me to put it together? <laughs> no. So one of the things that I have found fascinating um, about the collection is just the level of organization um, that, uh, not the collection itself, but of the activities and of everybody who was involved. Um, so many people were involved. I think on one newsletter I saw that there are 3,000 um, you know, homeowners who were actually supporting this. Of course, there's two people in each home, you know, probably supporting it. You want to tell us a little bit about um, Save Our Coastline effort first? Yeah, uh, we were incorporated in February of 70. Uh, and uh, the real problem was where do we get the money to take on this uh, task to incorporate Rancho PV? Uh, it was somewhat difficult to try and find out how much money we were going to need. We ended up needing a lot more than we thought. We spent close to two hundred seventy thousand dollars in nineteen seventy money. Two hundred seventy thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Uh, we got a lot of it from Homes Association. We got support. Uh, you know three-figured numbers from uh, the cities on the peninsula. Sure. Um, and uh, we were looking for the rest of it. Uh, some of it was written off by the attorney. Uh, oh, oh, you mean he just did it um, uh, gratis? Well, he, he gave us a bill and then he wrote off a piece of it. Nice. Because uh, he was uh, all for it as well. Yeah. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. And... Uh, the, the rest of it was basically funded by five of us, uh, all with different amounts, all we could scrape together yeah. to make that kind of money, mm -hmm. and uh, we ended up succeeding. Yeah. 
Well, the financial piece of it is one thing, but the coordination and all of the different entities that were involved. I mean, I was just looking at, at one of the files in the collection is a history of, uh, you know, of the RPV and also the Save Our Coastline. And there's the first, in, in January 1964, it says the first proposal for a fourth city um, was made. Uh, in 1967, the League of Women Voters published The Time Is Now. Do you yes. recall this? Yes. Yeah. Do you recall yes. how the League of Women Voters put that together? The League of Women Voters was very instrumental in what they did. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Dina Friedson uh, held a uh, charity committee basically, and she basically designed Rancho PV. Um, in what, when, you, when you say design Rancho PV, you mean the... the uh, no, the, no. Not yeah. the boundaries. No, the boundaries, no, I did the boundaries. Okay. I did the, you did sur the... I did the surveyed boundaries yeah. for the city. We did two sets. Uh, but she had three pillars that supported uh, Rancho PV. First, it was going to be single family residential low density uh -huh. secondly we're going to preserve the view uh -huh. and third we're going to have a lot of open space now if you take a look at it when we enter residential in 1973 we had just a little over 41,000 people yeah did we succeed in low density in 50 years later, we have only 43,000 and some. Is that right? That the, the, the population hasn't population, changed? Uh, population has changed only by 2,000 over 50 yeah. years. That's amazing. And these three pillars were from okay. Dina Friedson? Well, that, and the, that, what was the, Dina, that was Dina, the basis? When, when she put it together, yeah. she had three things in mind. Yeah. And they all support it. The next thing was view. Yep. We wanted to preserve the view. Sure. Now, it took us 16 years to get a view ordinance that would pass the constitutional test. Huh. Because the view is not something that typically people protect. So we went through with our attorneys changing words here, there, and everything, yeah. but not changing what the accomplishment was going to be. And we got a view ordinance in 89. Yeah. 16 years later. And now, just this past month, uh, we did a very large acquisition, uh, close to 90 acres, mm -hmm. uh, for what we have in a way of open space. space. Yeah. 50%, little better than 50% mm -hmm. of our city is open, open space. space owned by the city mm -hmm. in perpetuity. Yes, I and I just think it's incredible. And, and that's why when, when you look at the past efforts, it really sets the groundwork for yes. how the city has developed today. Yeah, yep. that, that's just amazing. Um, so one of the things also um, in the files that we got, there was a file for a speaker's bureau so uh, for people to go out um, to community groups and to explain what the fourth city effort was all about. Um, and that was just amazing, um, you know, questions and answers. Uh, you know, if you're asked this question, this is a response. Um, do you recall that? I recall a lot of it, yeah. but uh, I was tied up with uh, the seven people putting sock together and getting all the legal and technical stuff done. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't really keep track of that, but yeah. but we had 24 candidates for the election. Oh, you mean for the first election? For the first election. election. 24 candidates, yeah. 24 candidates. Now, you can imagine 24 candidates, they covered the peninsula. Oh, they Like just, a blanket. Yes. I mean, they... they they probably talked to every person. If they missed one, I'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. And that was really uh, a, a blessing in disguise because each one had their constituency. Sure. And overlap, yeah. certainly. But they all talked because they all wanted to be on a council. So all the discussions were positive with respect to the city. Uh-huh. Okay? Sure. And we ended up with 
a 80% voter turnout. Yeah, that's incredible, yes. I mean, we've not seen it before, and we probably will never see it again. No, you probably won't see it again, yes. Um, but that was for the council, but this Speaker's Bureau... No, that was for the I mean, city. Yeah, that was for the city, but the Speaker Bureau that I'm talking about was actually prior to the incorporation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was the groups. I think Dorothy LeConte was the, the one who what, organized that, or she Dar had these Dorothy, talking points, yes. yeah. Dorothy LeConte, uh, she was responsible for two major things, aside from a lot of others. She did the Speaker's Bureau that testified uh, to the Board of Supervisors yes. constantly. Yeah. Uh, she organized it. Uh, she had the speakers trained. Everything was written out. And yes. the, the nice part of it was that most people don't realize uh, the opposition was hiring clerks and secretaries to do their work. What they didn't know is they were uh, actually hiring sock people. <laughs> to do their work. <laughs> to do their work. So, so you had we, some moles. We were, privy, <laughs> we were privy to just about everything they did. So we could blunt their testimony because we spoke first as proposals. Um, and so we could blunt their testimony before they got to it. Yeah. And they never caught on. Well, <laughs> hallelujah. We don't want them to catch on. No, that it was, was good. It yeah. was, it was a, a great G2. It was very good. Yes, yes. yes. So it, in addition to the Speaker's Bureau, or part of that Speaker's Bureau, was also a big um, advertising um, and promotional and information dissemination campaign that was part of the project. Yes. And that, for me, is so much fun. And I brought with me today a couple of different things that I hope you'll like too. Do you remember the, the, the Save Our Coastline Punch monthly newsletter? Look at that. Yes. Yes. Aren't these just the greatest? Yes. I mean. And there's an entire series of these, of these yes. newsletters. Special that awards. Was again, this was again uh, Dorothy LeConte's work. Oh, so was she, was, she was, was that her background? Was public relations or advertising? No, no. Uh, she took on that task. He, there were seven people involved. Yeah. And each one had a very specific task to meet. Five of them were on the political side uh -huh. selling it, and two were on the uh, technical side. Dina Friesen was one of them. Uh -huh. uh, and she did this, and her relationship with LAFCO, Local Agency Formation Commission, was very helpful because halfway through the process, we had to change the boundaries. Oh, okay. The original boundaries included what the, the, the uh, RPD, the city, is now. Okay. Okay. It wasn't that way to begin with. Oh, that wasn't the original. These aren't the original no. boundaries. No. Oh. We started out with these, uh, these, these boundaries we started out with. Yeah. We were apprised of the fact by the homeowner's president, oh, we got all kinds of support for you. So we included Western Avenue, all the unincorporated area. Well, when we went to get the petition signed, it was dismal, the support we had. Oh. And we were concerned that if they voted as a block, they could actually defeat the city. Oh, those homeowners associations. Yes. Okay, if they were voting together, they could defeat the effort. Yeah, huh. the, the okay. Western Avenue section. Right. So halfway through, we changed it so that the easterly boundary followed the school district. Oh, I see. So you moved it for the school district boundary. We okay. moved it to the school district boundaries. I had to redo the boundaries. Uh -huh. And um, that's basically what the first city was, was that boundaries. Uh, a few years later, after a couple of refusals that uh, occurred, uh, on the Western Avenue, people said, no, we're happy with the county until they got threatened by first Lamita, then L.A. City, and then they finally said, please take us. Oh, for annexation. They were worried about being annexed. Yeah, yeah I see. Uh, by the other city. I see. 
So I just love these. These yes. newsletters are fabulous to read through yes. because they're a slice in time. I mean, this is April 13th, 1970. And, and it's telling you everything that's happening. Yes. Um, the next meeting, um, come to the LAFCO hearing meeting, um, yep. April 22nd is Earth Day, and you really get to see just what was happening. Yep. I mean, in this one, it's the research library at the SOC headquarters. I mean, there was quite the organization behind the, these efforts, which to me is really, is really interesting. And Alice Hackworthy was part she, of... She did the uh, uh, campaign uh, to get uh, the city, the, uh, the process put through in the application. The uh, land value was the thing that what I did with Senator Beverly at that time was say, had two words, and improvements, and uh -huh. that changed the picture. All totally. together. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. The second thing she did was uh, a real heavy campaign to uh, register voters. Ah, oh, okay. It, I mean, she worked her butt off to get yeah. that done. League of, she was with the League of Women Voters. Yes. She, and, and she was, she okay, was also I mean, circling, from Rolling Hills. And also from Rolling Hills. Yeah. And circling so, back to the, yeah. you know, the yeah. League of Women Voters putting yeah. up together this The Time Is Now thing. Yeah. yeah. And that was important for the fact that it made a difference in what the startup money would be for the city. To have voters? For the registered voters. For registered voters, okay. Okay, the process was this. You had three choices in terms, there are all kinds of state subventions and in lieu fees uh, that come to the city uh, based on population. Okay. Okay, you can take the previous uh, census. Okay. You can fund your own new census. Okay. Or you can take three times the registered voters. Oh, so this is why the number the of registered voters is important. is important. And so Alice Hackworthy was um, she instrumental had the campaign to do that to get people registered. Right. And see, this is what's so interesting is that you know th these are all very intricate details of it. But look at how uh, how it all came together. Yeah. You know, like if I'm you know not a registered voter, I'm thinking to myself, well, why do I want to register? But it actually had a very important meaning um, meant, behind the you know the campaign. It meant fifty percent more startup money than we would have gotten. There you go. That's it. And that's a big chunk of money. That's a big. That, that's a lot of yeah. coconuts, I think. Absolutely. So she had that. Then the. Uh, third campaign she did was actually the city campaign. The city campaign for yeah. the fourth city. For, for the, the fourth, for the city. fourth city. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Oh well, you will like seeing these. These are just some of the other things that are in the collection. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can see the bumper stickers and bumper the pins stickers. and yeah. for RPV. For. Yeah. Yep. All of this. All of that. Green and green and blue. Yeah. yeah. RPV, the stickers. But again, so you, know, you can tell I'm kind of an organization geek, um, but this was the, this is another one of the files that gets to it. This is the Fourth City Campaign Committee. And I wonder if this then is Alice Hackworthy's work, um, yeah. because this, uh, take a look at that. It has the Fourth That's City Campaign Officers, um, it, and it's still in the original you know, binding that it has. Let me put well, that as was, my action item. She was involved item. in this. I'd she was involved in, in all of the campaigns for just about everything that uh, uh, we ran the campaign for, the yeah. three campaigns. So I'm sure she was involved in this. Yes. Too. But again, I, I was jammed around the eyeballs with a lot of other stuff myself. So I, yeah. I knew the periphery of what's going on. Right. But some of the details I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, we, the attorney was Jim Herbert, and uh, he taught me one thing. Never ask an attorney whether he can do something. You ask him, how can you do something? <laughs> that changes his thought process. Oh, interesting. Because if you say, 
Can we do something? Get yes or no. Right. Well, how can we do it? He's got to think. Yes. So it's kind of plus minus. Yes. Yeah. Versus kind so, of ferreting so through it. So he taught me that. Yeah. Then obviously, you know, Dina Friesen, uh -huh. uh, she was from PBE. She was from PBE. See, look at how amazing this is. You have people from the surrounding cities yes. and the unincorporated. Yes. And I was the, uh, uh, Gordon Curtis and I were the only ones from the unincorporated area. I see. And the rest were from other cities. Uh, from the other cities in the area. Uh, yeah. Rolling Hills Estates was not represented on there. Oh, of, of the seven, it. you mean? Of the seven. Of no. the seven, no, right. No. But, but still, and of if, the effort. If you, th if you take a look at the people and what they did, yeah. each one had a unique capability uh -huh. in terms of the areas that they would work with. They really had talent in that specific area. Yeah. It all came together. Amazingly so. Yeah. I mean, that is what is amazing. And I, I didn't know about the three pillar, that concept. Yeah. Um, but when you talk about the city of Rancho Palos Verdes now, that's really what you think about. Yes. Low density. Uh, you and uh, views open and open space. Yeah. And here we are, 50 years later, getting ready to celebrate. And, and, and we've achieved all of yeah, that. Yeah, you've achieved all in of that. In spades. Yes, I'd say <laughs> so. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you, which I think is fun that people don't necessarily know, is this. This was also included in the collection, in, in your materials, but then also in some other materials that we had. And these are the city's first newsletters. Ah. Look at this. Yeah. So. Yeah. There you go. You can just kind of see. So this is one year later. We've got these large format um, newsletters. And look at the back, actually. There's your city council on the back of that one, Ken. You recognize anybody there? So we've got, who do we have? <laughs> well, there's me. There's Gunther you. Burke, Marilyn Ryan. Marilyn Ryan, yeah. Cisco yep. Ruth and Bob Ryan. Yep. No, relation. no relationship. <laughs> no relationship, right. Yes. Yes. yes I remember these. Yes. Aren't these great? Yeah. And, you know, for people who are, you know, that's, um, I, I just think it's fun to see the different types of materials. Because in addition to the histories, like we have these, you know, um, histories that are written up, um, you get to see lots of different sides and different aspects through the records you know, through what is, what was used by the organization. Being a new city, yeah. we didn't know what we could or could not do, so we did everything. Which, there you go. You know? Yeah, isn't that great? Uh, and uh, we did all kinds of things. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at our history over the past 50 years, we have initiated so many uh, things that other cities now are following. Oh yeah? But for example, give me one example. View ordinance. View ordinances. Okay. Yeah. There, there are view ordinances are, are now almost every contract city. In fact, charter cities have been adopted a version of our of view ordinance. ordinances. You've got to be careful yeah. so it stays constitutional. Sure. Uh, proper, okay. Uh, another thing, uh, the Geological Hazard Abatement District. Uh-huh. Is that for the, John the Tressaway, landslide? John Tressaway and I put that together. Uh, we had Senator Beverly pass that legislation. It is now being followed by other states, including Alaska. Huh. I talked to the city manager there in Juneau, and he was having a slide. I said, well, are you familiar with this legislation? He says, no. So I told him what it was. He wrote it down. Yeah. He has now got a geological hazard abatement district in Juneau. And see, these are just really interesting so things it's, it's, that it's permeate. All, yeah. We were the first ones to put a fiscal element in our general, general plan. plan. Yeah. And we got an award for that. Mm -hmm. And over time, we've uh, gradually moved it so that we now have a 50, not 10 or 15, but a 50% reserve. Reserves? 50% reserves. 50% reserve. Yeah. 
And even with that, we, we count our money so carefully that even with that, we have somewhere around a million to two million dollars surplus. <laughs> Which is nice. Well, yes. it, 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 it took us through the pandemic mm -hmm. yeah. very nicely. Uh, so uh, we, we are on good, solid Ground, foundations, yeah. really. And I think all of these things just also speak to civic pride and, um, you know, and kind of interest um, in the city and what the city can do, especially as we're celebrating next year, the 50th anniversary of the city. Well, we and, didn't uh, know we couldn't do it. So, yeah, we did so you it. did it. And here <laughs> we are 50 years later. Yep. Yeah. Well, this has been really fun, Ken. And um, so I hope um, this is at least a little bit of an explanation of why the collection isn't processed yet. Um, but I hope that you will come to the uh, local history center and I can show you some more of the boxes. I've actually pulled all of these from all the different boxes that I, that I thought would be fun. How does that sound? That sounds great. And great. Uh, uh, I'll be honest with you, it brings back memories that I haven't thought of in a long time like some of the newsletters, and uh -huh. they, you know, it, 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 after 50 years, you know, you lose some of that, and when you bring it up, it, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Right, yeah. right, yeah. We'll come anytime, and we'll do a trip down memory lane, and I'll show you all of the boxes. Great, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, Ken, thanks so much. And, oh, you're quite welcome. And we will wrap it up there, and we will just say to everybody, please come to the local History Center, and we'll see you on our next episode of History on the Hill.